morning my darlings a little bit strange starting at this vlog in the kind of changing cubicle at um, Soho Farm House but I wanted to very quickly show you my outfit of the day and this is the only place where there's a full-length mirror that I can show you without having my camera out in public um, not gonna lie this outfit probably isn't gonna last too long because it's gonna get toasty today but I've just had a lovely shower very pampering shower after a very tough gym session and I have actually got my bikini on underneath this is a lovely little bikini from Peony it actually makes me look like I've got boobs which we all know that I do not and then I've got this lovely little linen very breathable top on which I think is Lisa Maria Fernandez. I will correct myself on the screen if I'm wrong, um, but it's from the Net Sustain collection. And then my little Zimmerman shorts. In fact, let me show you here. You can see a little bit better here. I just love seeing this detail on the skin. I think it looks really lovely. Chloe shoes. And then I'm packing all of my day's essentials into my giant Loewe bag. talk to you properly without having to be a secret squirrel. We're home now after a really really lovely morning at the farmhouse. We left just as it was starting to get a little bit busier. I did film a little sneaky clip on my phone of what I had for lunch. It was the most delicious, I think you would describe it as Persian cuisine. Um, some gorgeous spicy potatoes, a chicken kebab wrap and some hummus and there was it was such a huge portion that I've actually got pretty much the same amount again that I brought home with me that we'll have later on today. But obviously we couldn't stay all day because of these little monkeys. Um, but it's absolutely boiling today. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I think we're gonna get the cushions out get onto the deck chairs and just spend our Friday afternoon enjoying the sunshine. We've had quite a few deliveries as well, including I made a little top shop order, so I'll show you that later on. Charlie's got some very big exciting packages, so I'm not sure what they are. You two are so silly. At least it's nice and cool in here for you, my little rascals. Look at you, you flirt. You're a flirt. You are such a minx. You're handsome and you know it. You are handsome and you know it. Oh, I love you just so much. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. It's too hard for me, actually. Super easy homemade iced latte. A little bit of vanilla syrup. Boop. Oat milk. And coffee. How good does that look? It almost looks like a Guinness with the foam on top. Oh my goodness. This is what I'm going to be reading out in the sun and this is what Charlie's going to be reading. It is the Big Green Egg Lifestyle magazine and the Big Green Egg cookbook. I'm not going to lie, I might have a little flick through these. I'm really keen to give it a try later on. Lots of recipes, so many things we can do. Can't wait until we get the pizza bit. Yum! Oh, so of the many deliveries that we've had today, what's this actually, darling? What is this? That's part of the table. That's what ah. I mean. I'm a bit nervous. Right. So um, we'd been looking out for a dining table for absolutely ages and my mum actually spotted this one on a website called Homes Direct and it just happened to be exactly what we were looking for. I'm hoping the quality is going to be good, fingers and toes crossed. It looks really lovely in the pictures um, and it was a really, really good price, so we shall see. And then this pile of deliveries over here is um, a huge amount of Graham and Brown paint. So over in the coach house, we are painting the utility area in Gobi, which is a gorgeous like pinky brownie blush shade from Graham and Brown. And then we also have canvas, which is the same as our family room, which one of the bedrooms is gonna be painted in. And also, um, was it called Trouble or something? So there's one floor off off. 
Oh, yes. brown, which is like a green colour, yeah. which will be done next week. Yeah. And then there is also the colour that I fell in love with that's like a dark, it's in between a black and a navy. Wow. It's a, well, I'm hoping it's a very dark navy for my dressing room. Epic. So we're going to do a bit of unboxing because although it wasn't, doesn't look like it on this side of the house, it just randomly started raining. Um, so yeah, ooh, that looks nice. Yeah, that looks really nice, doesn't it? So we've managed to get the table out of the giant box, which we'll take down to the recycling place probably on Monday. So the actual table itself, I mean, this is the top of it and it is hella chunky. <laughs> I just um, went back to the email to remind myself what I'd paid for it. And it's actually reclaimed elm, which is really lovely. And um, Charlie thinks that we might even be able to stain it a tiny bit darker, but I think it's lovely as it is. And this is it closed, but it does actually open up and extend so we can fit yeah, all the family around at Christmas. Third, I think you get at least another third of the table. Yeah. Um, to be honest, we definitely want put something on it anyway to protect it like yeah protect it from spillages everything mm -hmm. so i think we will just look at an osmo or a blanchon oil or stain that protects it that maybe literally just brings it slightly darker like not necessarily this honey color i, I was envisaging it i don't want it as dark as this now but just something a bit darker like this if you come and look at this wood here yeah, well, I think Andrew will be able to get it that colour. Yeah, only because in this room, mm -hmm. that all the wood's that colour. But then if you look at the table legs in this room, it does look really nice. I, I think it's slightly too light. But well, we'll we shall see, but um, yeah, it does extend, so we can fit everybody in it when we're allowed to have lots of people over. So yeah, currently the dining room still, there's nothing going on in here. Um, we're just kind of using it to store our old dining table which we're going to put over in the coach house all the stuff that's usually in the unit in the kitchen is in here because was, we just had that painted i was thinking like obviously this room is like we've put new lights in here and it's it's not a priority yet but it won't take a lot to transform this room no obviously we want to eventually have like a fitted cabinet in there and that will be quite expensive because it's going to need to be bespoke mm. but what do you think and what do your audience think about the floor because this is old this is original flooring However, part of me does think a nice, really, really sort of antique -y rug. Yeah. Not crazy. a huge one, because yeah. you want to see the floor, yeah. but mm -hmm. just sort of somewhere, I think it could make it a bit more cosy. Yeah, we need to look out some really nice chairs, and I think as we just go around antique shops and reclamation yards, we'll find some really nice bits and bobs. Mm. So, yeah. Has the sun come back out again yet? No. No, gosh, we timed it right being at the farmhouse this morning. Also, how funny is this? So Charlie and I drove, it was a detour, but it was like a good 45 minutes out of our way. Was it yesterday? Was it yesterday we did the sunflowers? Or the day before? Um, and we've just seen on the Village Facebook group that the farm that we get our eggs from, AKA a three minute walk, also has a massive sunflower patch. So I think we're gonna pop our boots on in a second and just go get some eggs and check it out. Look at Charlie and I literally drove 45 minutes the other day to go to a sunflower field and it's 
right here on our usual dog walk at City Bonkers. So I think we'll, we might pop here tomorrow morning to pick some because this is not like, um, so this is on a farmer's land, but what he's doing is they're doing a pick your own. So you can come along and pick some stems. Um, can't remember the pricing, but I think I just filmed that little chalkboard, but if you're in the area, definitely recommend. And this field is so stunning. They're all facing the other way at the moment, um, but it's absolutely beautiful. I might even ask the farmer if we can fly the drone over because that would just look spectacular. They've got a wheat field or a barley field there as well. It's just what Instagram dreams are made of right now with everyone posting all these countryside pictures. Then they'll hashtag it. Basically, what hashtag does is then all the images and everyone is sharing. We've been calling you for ages. What are you doing over here? I think he might have um, hurt himself on the bramble. You see, I went exploring through the sunflower fields by myself and I've got something really prickly stuck in my feet. So Daddy's just having a look. Mummy just found me sitting down, looking a bit sorry for myself. Okay, come on then. Come on then, Come on, Chick Chick. Come on, baby. So we've just had a lovely little preview of the sunflower field. It is absolutely stunning. They've got such a perfect spot. And if you can see it all behind me, and then, did they say wheat or barley? Barley. And then the barley field. <laughs> Literally, Instagram goals, seeing as that's what's trending this year. Charlie, I don't know if you heard, was giving him some uh, social media tips. We've said that they should cut like a little area um, and pop some hay bales and they even had milk. I think it, I can't remember what it's called, like a milk, that metal thing to create a little photo spot. It's called a milk, um, not a churn, is it? I think it might be, I don't know and Charlie was encouraging them to start a hashtag. But yeah, I might fly the drone over later or tomorrow morning. And um, we're visiting some friends tomorrow. Oh, fell down a hole. <laughs> we're visiting some friends tomorrow so we can take some freshly cut sunflowers there. And then Charlie's brother's girlfriend's birthday um, on Sunday. And her favorite flowers are sunflowers. So we can take some for her. Yeah, we're very lucky to have this beautiful spot on our doorstep. <laughs> I don't know if you can see what Charlie's doing. We're having to lasso the leads above our heads because there's all these little flies. The little flies are following us. So we're having to... They're all above your oh. Can you see them? You can, that's disgusting. Oh, And they're not everywhere, they're literally just above our heads. And I've been listening to this podcast will kill you all about mosquitoes today, so that's not good. <laughs> Goodness me. Why are they following us? This is working. All right, we are back from our walk and Charlie has two very exciting things to show me. What's first, son, darling? Excited. Can't believe I've had it for a week and I've only just lit it. But this week's been quite hectic. El huevo you know grande build, verde. Do you know what? Something that I do is build things up in my head as being quite a chore. Like starting I... your blog. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? And then starting um, your YouTube channel. But this is actually very straightforward. But yeah, so we're going to have burgers on it tonight, aren't we? We've got steak burgers from the butchers and we're going to have mozzarella. Somebody um, left a comment on my Instagram story saying, yes, we're finally going to see the secret Charlie Irons burger recipe. But the secret is no. you buy them from the butchers. No, 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 no. I do make them. <laughs> I do make them. But do you? But today, yeah, I've made them loads of times. What about the, the mustard basted ones? They're amazing. That was one time. I've made the mustard basted ones about four or five times. They're amazing. We baste them in French as mustard. Mm. Tonight we've got steak burgers. But I do make them. They are good. But burgers are one of those things that they're quite, they're not that much effort to make, but you can buy them better from the from Miss Butchers. Yeah. So. And what was the other really yeah, exciting thing, thing you wanted right, to show so me? We'll have an update on that. But this is much more exciting. No, it's not actually, but it's exciting on another level because it's changed. Do you remember how ha much hassle the hose pipe was before? Mm -hmm. Come through. Come through. Um, we have had the tap, which was over here, mm. moved and the plumber has put it under here and then run it back up the shed. 
So now we've got this fitted to the shed and it's a much longer hose pipe so it reaches much wider areas of the garden, which is a positive. It is actually a bit of a game changer because it was such a pain in the bum having to scroll it. It just does this and locks in like that. How does it lock? It just locks it. When you pull it out slowly like that, then right. it will lock. Okay. If you want it to go back in, you just pull it a tiny bit and walk it back. That is... Don't let it fling because it will damage, but then look. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, it is a game changer because we water, I mean... We should be clear that obviously we won't, we don't water plants for the sake of it, but we do water the pots every couple of, maybe every three evenings, every three days. They're looking a summer. bit sad. They do need it. Look, we, you know, and we're going to get water butts and we're going to do everything we can, but the pots do need water, okay? So before anyone starts getting <laughs> You're the preempting the water well, trolls. I know. We're going to do our best, but you know, there is a line. Yeah. And if you want pretty flowers in some pots we have to how be... amazing that the sunflowers didn't take any water like he didn't have to water that's going to be the key the wildflower garden meadow i want minimal watering mm -hmm. from a time and from a eco perspective yeah so all of that stuff and the fruit and veg we don't water very often look at the silhouette of the church but look how far this goes now it is a this should come all the way evening. out here Joseph. all the way to hydrangea island <laughs> r.i.p next to take shits in there now <laughs> Place to take shit. And the problem is, you can't find Don't use that word. Dexy, is that your lavatory? I'm not telling Charlie because I think he's got other plans, but I have just ordered some pumpkin seeds from Amazon and I am going to make it my secret project. Yes, so this little trough over here is going to be my autumn veg trough, is that what you call it? Trough? Kitchen? Kitchen garden? Vegetable? Kitchen? kitchen planter don't know and judging by how well these performed can you imagine if this was full of pumpkins for autumn gorgeous it is looking much better down here since I did my gardening but I do need to do a little bit more over the weekend Ooh, these roses are looking very pretty it's got a bit of pink tip to it mostly white but with little pink detail on the petals it's dead head that which fresh becky charlie just said um it's a shame we didn't cook mac and cheese with the burgers and the burgers are going to be ready in 10 minutes so i have taken that as a personal challenge and we're going to see if we can beat the clock beat the burgers and make the world's speediest mac and cheese. Are you up for the challenge, Sharon? Yes. Right, you can be my sous chef, get grating, kettle on. Let's do this. You got milk? You got milk? Yeah. Milk? Yeah. And your full fat milk might be even nicer, right? Boil the kettle. Grate your cheese. Melt some butter, salt in the water, add some flour and make a jus. Add your pasta. Keep stirring your sauce. Slowly add your milk, more milk, pinch of pepper, and don't stop stirring. Check your pasta's al dente. Add your cheese. Stir it in. Splash of truffle oil. More stirring. In the pasta. Pasta in a dish. Pour on the sauce. More pepper. More cheese. Even more cheese. Get it in. And a little bit more for luck. Into the agar. Meanwhile. Speak us through your routine for the buttercups. Well, we haven't, I, I'll be honest, this has all been in a bit of a rush, hasn't it? But we're going to have mayo in there. We're going to have a little bit of mustard. Yeah. We're going to have the burgers, which have got mozzarella on them. Mozzarella. We're going to have a little bit of tomato. By the way, and these are like, both for Charlie. Mine's yeah, normally I have like onion. Oh, did you see how mozzarella melted? Now this I prefer to Heinz for burgers, not for all ketchup, like fish and chip shop chips need Heinz ketchup. This, tip from tip tree, it's a bit sweeter and it's a bit more like a relish. And there you go boy. And then obviously these have been toasted, ciabatta ones. I prefer them to brioche. Do you? Yeah. Brioche is a bit too sweet for a burger, mm. in my opinion. They're quite popular. Look at that mate. Mac and cheese gone side. Mm. Not quite ready but the burgers are done. And that's lean in 15. Oh, 
hopefully you enjoyed our Joe Wicks-esque cookery tutorial of the mac and cheese. Oh wow, this smells truffly, but yeah. bloody good. I would normally leave it in the oven for another five minutes so that it goes properly golden on top. There are some golden bits, but not quite enough for my it, liking. It tastes good though. But Considering we, we haven't planned on it. No, this is mac and cheese in a rush. Well, I'll come back for more, but that's enough for now. Cheers, mate. Your carriage awaits, Dexy. <laughs> Mummy, can you point out the first class section, please? Where are you gonna put your we are about to go on an adventure through Windsor Great Park. What have you got on your lap? I have got uh, strawberries and cream. Yep. And I've got Dickie. Yes. Two amazing things. Dexy's trying to get on your lap. Oh, I love it. We're going it. on the pedicab. For P's birthday. Whoop, whoop. P dogs. Dicky, 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 Dicky!